Hello everyone, welcome to FunnelToTunnel.com. First of all, thank you so much for uh, liking my last video, which was on the trimming calculations on board bulk carrier and received a lot of positive feedback from all the viewers and a lot of queries as well, which I tried to clarify to you over the mail and thank you again. But after that video, I received a lot of requests from the fellow seafarers stating that they want me to do a video stating how you go about the dead weight calculations after a voyage instruction is received. So if you have the same question, this video is for you. And uh, obviously the cargo calculation and procedures are pretty long. So I won't be able to complete it in one video. So we will be making series of video on this topic. So without further delay, let us discuss and learn how to go about it. So the topic of this video is cargo calculations and pre-stop plan the principles and procedures on board the bulk carriers. So there are three steps of loading cargo on bulk carriers. Step number one is to determine that how much cargo can be loaded safely in a given situation. Now this is done by performing a dead weight calculation. Step number two is that once you have determined that how much cargo you can load safely, then you have to check that in which all holds you will load the cargo. And this is called devising a stowage plan. The first plan which is given to the charters on the basis of the information which the charters and agents have provided to us is called the pre-stow plan. The stowage plan which is tendered after the loading has been completed is called the final stowage plan. So this is step number two and the final step is to determine that how you will be loading that cargo into your ship safely. This is done by means of devising a loading sequence or a loading plan. So we will be learning about all these three steps but in this video we will be learning only about step number one that is performing the deadweight calculation. So let us read the voyage instructions on a bulk carrier a typical voyage instruction would look something like this. The things which are important for you as a cargo officer or a chief officer I have highlighted in yellow so that you can take a note of it. So let us quickly go through the information which is highlighted in yellow. The first is the load port. The loading port has been fixed as one safe berth UST Luga in Russia. We will be loading only on one berth. That means the entire loading operation will happen only in one port. So we have only one loading port. Now coming to the discharge port, one safe berth Dunkirk East plus one safe berth Ghent in Belgium. So Dunkirk is France and Ghent is Belgium. So we know the loading port will be one and discharging port will be at two berths or two countries rather. Then comes the third point regarding the cargo. So the voyage instructions say cargo 77,000 metric tons 10% MOLOO coal. Two crates bases down below. Crate number one is 30,000 metric tons 10% MOLOO -O coal Dunkirk East and grade number two is 47,000 tons 10% MOLOO -O coal for Ghent. So let us go back again, read again. Cargo the charters want us to load is 77,000 metric tons plus minus 10% MOLOO. So MOLOO stands for more or less in owner's option. That means charters have advised the owners or the master who is a representative of the owner to load a cargo which is 77,000 metric tons plus 10% or 77,000 metric tons minus 10%. So any cargo between the range of 69,300 to 84,000 tons is acceptable by the charters keeping into account safety of the ship. So normally for bulk carrier trade they give this more or less in owner's option, a figure of 10% whereby the master can devise a storage plan and check how much maximum cargo can he take. In this particular voyage instruction, we have been advised to load 77,000 metric tons cargo plus minus 10% more or less in owner's option. Basis two grades. So for the simplicity of this video and for you guys to understand, I will not be doing two grades of cargo. However, I will be loading only 77,000 metric tons plus minus 10% basis the dead weight calculation. So we are keeping the video simple. We are keeping the concept simple and taking only one grade of cargo, not two grades of cargo. We will be doing for two grades as well in our upcoming videos. 
And finally, charters warn us to maximize cargo intake, taking into account upcoming port restrictions. And also they want us to confirm the restrictions at your site. So let us move ahead and uh, check what is step number one. So first way to go about is to collect the information. You should collect the following information for loading port Luga in Russia and discharging port Dunkirk in Ghent. What you have to check is the location and the applicable load line zone, the water density over there and any other limitation at the port which must be obtained through the local agent, charters or any other information source at hand. So for the load port and the discharge port, you should always know what is it location, what is the applicable load line zone, what is the water density at these ports and any other limitation at the port such as some bridge is there or some dredging is happening which has restricted or has put any limit to your draft, maximum sailing draft. So all this information you will be getting through the local agent. So master should always contact the local agent and ask on their end that what are limitations which are applicable to the port which the vessel is calling. This is what becomes a part of collecting information with respect to the ports which the vessel will be calling. As a part of collection of information, let us quickly go through the load line chart and see that what are the applicable load line zones to the ports which the vessel is calling. So if you can see on your screen, the port over here has been marked Usluga. This port is in Gulf of Finland, but is in Russia, but it is in the Baltic area. And uh, if you see, we have already found that where the Usluga lies and that is in Russia. And what is the applicable load line zone for this port? If you go on just onto the on the right side, you can read summer zone for ships over 328 feet. That is 100 meters in length. So we have got summer zones. Our ship is a Panamax bulk carrier and for obvious reasons as per the load line chart, we are into summer zone. This port lies in the summer zone. So this is one thing which we have found out. The applicable load line zone to the port of UST Luga is summer zone. I have also for your information plotted this course if you can see right from UST Luga which the vessel will be transiting through the Great Belt out of score and to the first discharge port that is Dunkirk. So Dunkirk is over here and this is the route which the vessel will be taking. The second discharge port is Ghent which is near to Dunkirk only. So I have plotted this uh, rough course stating that which all load lines those the vessel will be passing through. So we know by now that UST Luga is a port which comes in summer zone and then when you will be transiting this when you were doing this voyage you will be passing from summer zone into winter zone. So let us go to the first discharge port and check in which load line zone does Dunkirk fall. Dunkirk falls into North Atlantic winter seasonal zone. So as of now we are in the month of November already and uh, if you see the winter zone starts from 1st of November to 31st of March. So Dunkirk is in winter zone and similarly the second discharge port is also in winter zone. But if you see the voyage of the ship, the ship's voyage in midway passes from summer zone to winter zone near to the score. This is the point where the load line zone is changing from summer to winter. To put it simply, the vessel will load in summer zone and while making her voyage, she will be transiting from summer zone to winter zone at score. After that, the vessel will be fully in winter zone at first discharge port as well as at second discharge port. This is very important for you to determine because this is the first step. Ensure that which all load line zones vessel is will, will be transiting through. So now that we know our load port lies in summer zone, our first discharge port lies in winter zone and our second discharge port also lies in winter zone and during the voyage the vessel will be transiting from summer zone and entering into winter zone at a point in our voyage while passing score. Let us move ahead. Let us go to the ship's trim and stability booklet and determine what is the summer draft and the winter draft of the ship. In this case, the summer draft is 14.486 and winter draft is 14.185. Corresponding to them are the displacements and the dead weight marked. Let us calculate what is the point of limiting draft. Let us try to obtain the point of limiting draft of the voyage. This is very important step 
and should be calculated with utmost care. Remember that point of limiting draft determines the draft to which the vessel must be loaded to. Finding the limiting draft will help you to determine that at which point during the voyage should you plan your loading for. You don't want your ship to be overloaded at any point of time during the voyage. At this point, the vessel will be at a position where the ship can carry the maximum amount of cargo without exceeding the limiting draft. It will be at this position the ship can carry the maximum amount of cargo without exceeding the limiting draft. So let us understand this with the help of a table. Uh, as you gain practice and as you gain experience, you won't be requiring this table just like any other season chief officer does. But uh, for a start, it is very important. It reduces the mistakes. Let's say that the present position of the ship is marked by a ship model, which I have kept in that same column. And the presently, the ship is in ballast condition. From there, the ship moves to the loading port berth. So for that moment, there is no restriction on the ship because the ship is in ballast and the load line zone is summer. Now the ship is at the loading berth and uh, now it has started to load. But now the draft restriction at this berth becomes 14.486 meters, which is the summer draft of the ship. The ship has now departed from the loading port and just before arrival to the winter zone at score, the draft again is as per the summer zone of the ship. So maximum permissible draft is 14.486. Please note that after loading, the ship is consuming the fuel oil. So therefore her draft is reducing and not exceeding. Also, please note that in the loading port, the density of the water is one. And also at this point, just before transit, the density of the water is one. So just before entering into the winter zone, again, the draft limitation is same 14.486, which is a summer draft of the ship and the load line zone is summer. Now the ship has just reached the transition point at score. So currently the ship is just entering the winter zone. And at this point of time, maximum permissible draft for this ship should be 14.185 and that is the winter load line zone draft. So this is the limitation. Maximum permissible draft previous to this stage was 14.486 and now that maximum permissible draft has reduced to 14.185. So what I mean to say that our ship when entering into the winter zone should not be exceeding this draft which is the winter draft. Then again the ship has now completely entered winter zone and therefore all the other legs are if you can see is in winter zone which we have already identified using the load line chart and also there is draft restriction at Dunkirk and also at Ghent so permissible draft becomes 14 decimal 185 missed out this uh, digit of 5 in the last but these three drafts are 14 decimal 185 so apology for my typo error I have included in this slide the distances between ports so if you see the table now you can readily understand that at transition point the vessel draft like I said should not exceed 14.185 which is the winter mark of the ship so if you study the voyage from Usluga loading port from 14.486 the draft limitation at score should be 14.185 so this is what is the limiting point of this voyage. And this is what the limiting draft is. So this is a very important concept for you to understand that where in the voyage is the limiting point coming. So this is what the limiting point is. We have to plan for this stage of the voyage. In order to put it simply, we have to plan our voyage keeping the transition point into the account because it is over here the draft limitation is reducing to 14.185. So we need to plan for this stage of voyage like I have marked. And how are we going to do that? Let's go ahead. So now we know that the point of limiting draft in the voyage will be experienced when the vessel will be passing score and transiting the load line zone from summer zone to winter zone. Just in your mind, imagine that your ship is floating 
at SCO at the winter zone on a draft of 14.185 meters at a density of 1. At this stage, what is the maximum cargo which a vessel can carry? In the first row, I have calculated the displacement at 14.185, which I obtained from the stability booklet at a density of 1.025, which is 9 to 658. I converted this displacement at freshwater density and obtained 90398 as you can see. I subtracted the light ship and obtained the dead weight of the vessel. And from this dead weight, I subtracted all the consumables, for example, fuel oil, which I'm expecting while passing score. And same as with the diesel oil, which is expected figure while passing score. Again, I have subtracted fresh water, unpumpable ballast, slop sewage, and the constant of the ship. So at this stage, the maximum cargo that a ship can carry is 75,830 metric tons. And I hope that you have understood this concept till here. And if you have not understood this concept, feel free to drop a comment below. Let's do the dead weight calculation at score. So if we load 75,830 tons of cargo at load port, then the vessel while transiting score will be floating at a draft of 14.185 meters at density 1. So what I mean to say is that the vessel will be at her winter marks on arrival winter zone at score, which is what the limiting point in the voyage is. So you are not exceeding your drafts at the same time you are loaded optimally to your marks with the maximum cargo which can be safely carried by you. Let us take the ship back with the same amount of cargo which you have decided to load now and see what is the condition at load port. So the cargo which can be loaded limited by the limiting point at score obtained in previous slide is 75,830 tons. You add light ship to it and the fuel oil the figure which is on departure Luga, diesel oil on departure Luga, also fresh water, pumpable ballast, slop sewage, constant. If you add all these figures, you will come to know the displacement of the vessel. If you calculate the draft which is cor corresponding to this displacement, you will obtain a draft of 14.18. So now let us perform a quick check about all the legs of the voyage. So at Luga berth, which is a load port, the load line zone is summer, the density is one, the displacement which you obtained in the last slide is 90426, the maximum permissible draft is 14.486, and the draft which you obtained 14.19. So this is well below the maximum permissible draft. After that, at transition point, which is at score, the load line zone changes to winter, the density is 1, displacement is 90398 and the maximum permissible draft like I told you before was 14.185 and the draft which you have planned for is 14.185. So that means at transition point score the vessel will be floating at her winter draft provided she is loaded with the cargo of 75,830 at load port. Let us move ahead and take the vessel hypothetically to Dunkirk. At Dunkirk, the first discharge port, the load line zone is winter, the density is 1.010, displacement changes to 90393, but since the density at Dunkirk East is 1.010 and maximum permissible draft is 14.18, but our actual draft, the planned arrival draft is 14.05, which is again lesser than the maximum permissible draft. And with the help of little bit of common sense, you can easily assume that your draft will be much, much lesser than 14.18 because as per the voyage instructions, you will be discharging about 30,000 metric tons of cargo at Dunkirk. So again, at Ghent, you are complying with the draft requirements. So what is the conclusion? It is very important to find the limiting point of the draft during your voyage. 
it is very important to study each and every leg of the voyage and determine restrictions for each leg. Try to gather information from agents, charters, guide to port entry or other information sources which are reliable. Always make sure that the drafts are not exceeded than permissible for any given leg. So to conclude this example number one, a total of 75,830 tons of coal can be loaded at load port Usluga so that when the vessel is passing SCA, which is the transition point of summer zone to winter zone, the vessel will be at her winter marks. So like I said, the three steps of loading cargo on bulk carriers, which are shown on your screen, we have completed the dead weight calculation. This was the first example which I explained to you for performing the dead weight calculation. After this video, we will be discussing two more examples of performing the dead weight calculation. And after that, in the upcoming videos, we will be using the same three examples and creating a stowage plan for each of them. And finally, we will be devising a loading sequence for the same voyages. So like I said, we have completed step number one for example number one in the next video with another example. Thanks for watching.